Hello and welcome to another episode of The Wandering Watercolor. Today I'm painting the second page of the quaint scenery watercolor coloring book that I make myself. Uh, I do everything by hand. If you bought it from me at one of the markets, I really appreciate you. And if you want to buy it, it'll be in the description. Otherwise, you can just pause and draw out what we're drawing and then just kind of paint along with us. And let's get over to the drawing table. Okay, so this is the page. It may not be exactly in order depend because sometimes I switch them up uh, just depending on which one I want to be on the cover. And... Uh, this is the page that we're working on. This is what the finished product will look like. Um, so this is the coloring page and this is, it's just kind of like a cute little hut um, or cottage, I mean. So the colors may not come out exactly as it looks right here, but they'll be very similar. Um, and that's okay, because there's a lot of variability with watercolor uh, every time you mix it. And lay it down there's changes in the pigment and water and um, so and the colors that you're mixing it in so that's fine um, as always make sure you have a scrap piece of paper your rag your the little pen that comes with the palette that uh, if you bought it for me this is what the palette would be and um, something to mix on and a jar or a bottle of water so you don't have to keep using the reservoir and changing it out Okay, yeah, let's get right to it. So, we're gonna grab some brown. I'm gonna get a little more. And this brown is a little too orangish. Like it's coming out, yeah, it's, it's very orange actually. Um, so, what I'm going to do is put a little bit of this green. This green is a little bit on the blue side, it's like a blue green and that dulls it down immediately and put a little more so there so yeah and put a little more brown that looks too green so that was my mistake so now i'm just gonna add more brown let me do a little test here Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. Actually, let me use the back of this. Yeah, like, I like how that looks. So, I'm gonna dilute it now. I'm just gonna dilute it a bunch. And, because the first wash, we're gonna do the, the ground right here. Oh, let me unclip it. Uh, I'm going to stretch the paper a little more than than what it was already stretched at. The reason I do these little clips is because you have to have your paper stretched when you're painting with watercolor. Um, otherwise, it becomes too warped uh, very easily. Perfect. Okay. Okay, sorry about that. Had to adjust my seat here and my computer. Um, okay, so that looks good. So basically, get a nice, good wash, good wash, like beginning wash going here. It doesn't have to be perfect. So we're just gonna do like that. Maybe, maybe even a little lighter. We're just gonna grab that and the dirt path. I'm gonna go over the dirt path and. We don't want it to be any stronger right now. Part of the reason being is, um, well, one, it'll it'll dry much lighter, and two, um, that'll help us when we emphasize some of the lights and darks in the dirt path leading up to the to the cottage. Let me just do all that. Okay. There we go. Very simple. Very simple, just basic wash to show where the dirt path is leading up to the cottage. 
okay i'm just gonna bring this out again next thing we're gonna focus on while this dries we will focus on the kind of like the straw roof um it's more yellowish orangish i use a lot of ish colors if you've seen any of my other, my other tutorials my favorite color to use is an ish, -ish color um, so I'm gonna grab the yellow orange and then also some of the brown actually I probably could just use this and kind of just mix it in and that right there looks about perfect for what I want because the first wash is just gonna be just the initial wash is gonna be kind of we're going for more transparent wash so that then we can build up on top of it if the initial wash is too heavily pigmented you can still do that but that's usually only done if you're really going for like really intense deep dark colors so here we go we're gonna go like that everywhere where the roof is the straw roof of the cottage we're gonna go right there right there we get some more I'm doing this kind of quick because this is medium grade watercolor paper and it dries much quicker um, if it's if it was a heavy duty high quality watercolor paper you could take your time mixing the colors because it stays very uh, wet on the paper um, but I actually like these in particular for beginners because what that does is um, it trains you to work a little quicker and be more cognizant of how you lay down the paint and how that that it's time sensitive so you're not um you're not getting used to just doing everything very slowly so if you are used to working with this paper when you switch over to a very high quality paper like arches or something like that then you're actually much much better it's much easier to control everything and work with it um, but this paper is also good, regardless. It's it's still very good paper. Okay, so we have that. We have the dirt. We have the um, base but base color for both of these. And next, let's see. I'm just gonna fill it out. Yeah, it's still pretty wet, so I'm not um, not gonna worry about that. Um, next, what I'm gonna do is. I'm actually just gonna mix some of the red here so we can go ahead and put down some colors or some flower color right here and then after that we'll put so there's like a burgundy and then a and then a more just pure red so we'll go for those two first we'll go for the burgundy that one's pretty easy because it's just straight out of the palette and just gonna go for that one we are gonna go right here and remember you don't always have to stay exactly inside the line you can you can color outside the lines actually I I recommend you to color outside of the lines just so that you're not like you're know, getting stuck in like a kind of like a constrained mindset because uh, watercolor is very kind of like loose and free and it's I, I just think it looks much better when you let it be that way instead of trying to like force it into being very tidy and if you look at this one like one might say like oh that's a very well controlled like no actually that's very loose like there's a lot of these spots like I just kind of made them very quick and loose and like the, uh, like the right here in the where to show the strokes where the the hay would be or the straw, I guess, down here for the dirt path. You can be very quick and loose with it. Uh, I forgot to close my door. There we go. Sorry about that. Okay, so we have the burgundy here. Now the rest of the rest of the red is it's going to be more of just the pure red, so we'll grab that. Go 
right there. And we are going to do a couple of dots. Like there's there's some circles here or some dots that you can see. We'll draw those right there. There's some right here. Right there. Right there. Okay. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. These are like, think of these more as guidelines. The thing to really focus on is the technique of how you're laying down color um, with the uh, with the different strokes and like I'm just dabbing right now. I'm not even making strokes. I'm just kind of like dabbing just to let off some of the color onto the paper. So do that and so this is gonna be more orange over here. So let me see. I'm gonna mix this up. Uh, actually, I'm going to use my brush to pick up some of this because I don't want it to be came out more burgundy colored, but I want it to be more reddish. And then grab my orange color here and mix it in. Mix it in here. Yeah, I'm going to pick up this brown here just because I'm worried that it's going to get in. Yep, it did. Totally did. Yep. All right, maybe I caused that. All right, that's that's fine though. That's good enough. And then just get a bunch more of the orange or yellow so we can make this more orange. Okay, so that looks fine. And then what we will do now is we'll just put a bunch of orange here, orange here. And I, again, just be loose with it. Don't, don't, don't stress out about it. So just kind of have fun, be loose. Put it right here. And then just kind of like short bursts, maybe a, a little bit of a, more of like dabbing or <laughs> just putting dots on top of the paper and then every now and then maybe just like an, an occasional um, brush stroke just to show more texture. There we go. Okay, there we go. dry off my brush okay so that looks good so far the path itself is pretty much dry and so is the roof so now we just have to wait for these parts to dry where the little flowers and berries are and oh, actually um, we can still work on on the bushes all around um, the next part would be the there's a violet color. So actually, let me pick this up so we're not getting into the brown. Okay, the violet color, we're just gonna get some of the dark blue right there, some of the burgundy, and mix it together. And that was very quick. Look at how quickly that mixed. We got our burgundy color right there, good to go. And we'll put a little bit right there, right there. And then also right here. That's good. Get some more. And there's some dots here. These are violet colored. And put a little bit up here. And over here as well. And it looks like that's pretty much it so yep the the rest of the bushes are pretty much just uh, well actually now we also have to do a little bit of yellow so let me pick up I gotta clean up my yellow I have a bad habit of leaving my little 
uh, pans, my watercolor pans mixed in with different colors in them. Um, so basically here, we're just going to get the yellow, just straight yellow. Yellow is such a, it's a, it's basically a very light color. So when it's right next to white, it just doesn't show up very well. I'm just going to go straight for the yellow and then just put, put some dabs in here like that. And right here. And same right here. And that's it. Okay. I'm going to leave that. And I'm just going to put brown right on top of this. Because um, it won't... It won't hurt it in any way. In fact, I think that'll just... That'll look just fine. Perfect. So, next I'm just going to... Well, let me just... I think it looks fine, but... Yeah, that's... Yeah, let me add a little more brown. There we go. So basically, we're just gonna get the the little uh, window panes right here. The, uh, everywhere where there's these little um, rafters that are going around, kind of like building the outer wall of the of the cottage. That's where we will apply all of the brown. And here we go. We'll go right there. Right there. And right there. And there. Okay. Like that. And like that. And here. And like that. Down here, okay, that's good. Oh, messed up a little bit over there, but not gonna worry about that. Nothing to do about that. And I'm, I'm not worrying, <coughs> excuse me, I'm not worrying too much about staying inside of the line, as you could probably tell. Um, as long as you get kind of like the, you get the idea of the overall gist of how it looks. Also, it gives it a little more of an appeal if you go outside of the line every so often. This does not have to be perfect. Not like that. In here. Alright, there we go. There's a little bit of a... I'm not sure what that is. It looks like a little birdhouse right there. Actually, I just realized... Rinse off my brush and then pick up some of the uh, straw color and just put it right on top here. I forgot, forgot to call it this little guy. And I'm gonna dry off my brush and then just pick it up. There we go. Perfect. Or I, I guess I should stop saying that. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just... Perfect as in I like how it looks. <laughs> um, okay. Now, the brown... This, we're going to dull it down a little bit with the use of the green here or the blue-green. And the reason being is the next part that we're going to color is there's a fence back here. And we don't want it to stick out like these ones, so it's a more dull color back there. It's still brown though, so I'm gonna do that. We will also do the same for this shovel that's resting against the cottage. And also for this bucket that's right here. It has a little bit of green on top of it. And Looks like it's on top of like a crate here or something, but yeah, it's kind of hard to tell. Um, anyway, that's that's pre pretty much it. That's perfectly fine. Okay, there's some red dots here that are not dry yet. So as I'm waiting for those to dry, the next part that will be very easy to tackle will be the. Um, well, 
be the sky. So yeah, let's do that here. I'm always trying to think of like which parts to do just because I don't want to interfere with what I'm doing next. <clears throat> That's really the hardest thing about watercolors. You kind of have to be very cognizant of what areas you're putting in the color in and when and yeah I, I would argue that that's probably the hardest part about watercolor okay so i have my blue here for the sky and it's too saturated so i'm going to add more water to it so that it's more transparent more water less pigment and all i'm going to do is i'm going to go right here Call it in like that. And here. Okay. You could change it up. You don't have to make it exactly like I'm making it if you want to give it kind of like a different feel for the for the sky and where the clouds are located. Um, this is just what I'm doing, but it's a very simple setup. There's a cloud here and a cloud here, and that's it. And there's your sky. How about that? Progressing fairly quick. Okay, so actually, there's a little door right here that is that's also blue. Um, I'm gonna get a little bit of the black here, and a very just a very tiny amount, just so we could change up the the tone of the blue. I'm just gonna put it right there. Okay, and I'm just gonna leave that, and off to the next thing. I'm gonna kind of dry up some space here so that I can uh, mix more colors there we go so I'm gonna get my green get a bunch of green there's a lot of green in this piece and I'm gonna get a little bit of brown there we go there's the reason being is because it uh putting a little bit of brown in here makes it more like a, a earthy as opposed to <laughs> sky uh, because well this is very this green is very blue green and putting that orangish brown helps make it much more uh, leaf co colored uh, but I'm just gonna to turn up the the yellow in this green make it a little more yellow green and get a bunch more water so let me I'm, I think I like how it looks I'm just gonna test it uh, I need it I need it to be a little more a little more than that so I'm gonna grab the yellow orange put it in here let's see how's that looking yep that's the green that I want and I'm gonna get a bunch of water now just because I don't want it to be so saturated. And that looks good to me. We'll do a little wash right here. A little wash on the tree. And fill it all in. And same right here. When I start doing the shadows, I'm going to make it more pigmented, more heavily pigmented. There we go. I'm just gonna cover all of this. Nice and easy. I'm gonna take my time and not worry about it too much. And you back here. I 
it's okay that it's a little darker right there especially since in, it's in the background um, we won't be able to distinguish the background from from the foreground and now we're gonna put all around here kind of around the little dots that I made it's it's not the end of the world if you happen to paint over some of the dots that's totally fine Just try not to rub them in or anything just because they may run into your green. But also that could be a desired effect if you're wanting to make it look, look a little more um, runny, I guess. Um, some watercolorists are really, really good at doing that. And uh, if you practice at it, you can get some really good effects out of that. With the different colors just running in and out of one another it can actually make a very interesting piece okay just filling it all in there we go and I just continue to follow where the shrubbery or the greenery is. Do that. All right, we'll go down here. Nice and easy. As you can tell so far, we're just we're just kind of laying down the flat washes. Nothing complicated about this. It's just kind of like following the pattern and and you don't even have to worry about staying inside the lines. Like just just have fun with it. And This is really good though for practicing brush control and exactly how you want to lay down the lines and the colors um it's one of the things that I really enjoy about these is it helps you just practice really, really good brush control. Okay. And then right here. Here up front, the, the bush is a little darker, so I'm just adding the color without worrying about diluting it too much there we go Okay, and yeah, it's running, it's running a little bit into the green, but it's fine. It doesn't look bad or anything. There was a couple of places that that happened, but it it looked fine. Like it doesn't look bad, so that's not to worry. And this is a fairly complicated piece, but I'm just kind of going along and not not worrying too much about the the whole thing. Just kind of focusing on each each part and when where we are at with each part, and then it comes together as a whole in the end. <laughs> it's almost like a metaphor for life. Okay. All right. There we go. So, yeah. We laid down all the green. Green. 
So we are at 30 minutes so far. This will probably take a little over an hour just because it's, like I said, it's a complicated piece. But we did a lot in 30 minutes so far, so that's good. Now the next part, I will want to go ahead and put the, the shadows in the roof. And for that, we can pretty much use this, um, but I'm, I need to put a little more of this yellow-orange in it. There we go. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So now, the way we're going to do that is we're just going to do kind of like short strokes right there, like that. And back here and okay just kind of um the little strokes they're vertical short strokes just to kind of go along with the the composition in which way the straws would lie down and that's really it that's that's kind of it I don't like I'm not over complicating it I'm just kind of keeping it nice and simple and well, actually it looks nice I like it I just added a little more the, the color dries very quickly on this paper, and I just added a little extra layer there. And just short strokes. Just kind of like showing where the shadow is. And that's pretty much it. It's actually kind of fun watching how the whole thing starts developing form. Like that. See, that looks a lot more three-dimensional now. We're gonna get a little more darken up the bottom here, just because it's it's all the way at the bottom, and that's kind of like uh, least access to the light. Also, gonna put a little bit under here for the shadow of this uh, little birdhouse thing. Put a little bit here, and that's it. You can still like kind of like play around, add a little more if you want to in certain places, but I'm kind of good with that. Go right there, and right here. Cool. Yeah. Now I'm going to go ahead and mix the building color. Um, well, actually, you know what? I'm gonna wait for this to dry. Uh, because if I start putting down color where the building is, uh, this will, I'm, I'm almost certain that it will run into it. So we're going to ignore that. And we're just going to focus um, back here on the on the trail. Get a little, a little brown. A little blue, dark blue. Uh, not too much. Maybe a bit much. So... There we go. And that's really all I need. Yeah, that looks good to me. I'm gonna go like this. And just kind of do quick, quick strokes to the side. And just kind of show, make them a little curved. Kind of to go with, almost like there's cobblestones in the dirt path or something like that. And just throw it here and there. It's okay if they vary a little bit in darkness. That actually makes it a little more interesting for the eye. I'll go like that. There we go. Look at that. It's starting to get formal already. The whole thing is uh, looking much better. I like that. 
and I'm just adding a little more. Um, I'm gonna I, around the sides. I'm gonna add a lot more dark because it, it helps frame the image better and kind of like focus towards the middle. Um, you don't have to do that, um, but you can. It'll make it look more uh, focused as a piece. Put a little more here and there, and okay, not bad. That is a nice looking dirt path. Rinse my brush. Get a little more green. Throw that on here. A little brown. There we go. And eh, maybe a little more. Okay. Get some water. And get a little bit of this yellow orange. All right, that's a nice. It's a nice good yellow green strong yellow green color. I like it. It was good to me. So, now we're just going to do the shadows. The shadows, we're going to stay mostly towards the bottom. Um, kind of follow the form. Like, for example, let me see if I have a pencil here. Like, this form right here, it's kind of like this. We're going to go like this. Kind of like if it's coming from above, that's the shadow. I think you get what I mean. Let's do it. Go like that. All right. And same right here. The strokes that I'm making, they are slightly curved as I'm making them. Um, because it gives more of a texture, kind of like an appeal of a uh, shrubbery or leaves when they're up here. You can practice that on your scrap paper, just kind of like, like quick, short, like that. Not straight, but like a little curved. And then we just continue on down right here. And obviously you just kind of do that going up as well. Like try to focus towards the bottom of each um, green part, but also going up because it shows the texture. Um, obviously there's leaves all throughout. So there's, you know, little ripples of shadow and light. It actually makes for a very interesting uh, subject matter to study if you ever uh, go out and do some plein air painting. It's always really interesting to just kind of like look at the trees and p paint them or sketch them with watercolor paints. Um, it'll definitely improve your ability as a watercolor painter. Um, I can vouch for that. <laughs> always try to paint or sketch from real life um, if you can, just just because it's. Um, well, one, it's enjoyable and relaxing, but two, it's a great benefit to improving your skill. Unless your goal is just to enjoy it and have fun, which in that case, I'm right there with you. Okay. There's some kind of, the on this little shrub here, there's like these blades that are kind of sh short and... Uh, straight so that's i'm just kind of like putting it in like that um that way there's also some variability that makes it look more interesting I'll put it right there okay and then up here same thing kind of like short bursts and you, you can see how quickly the whole thing is just coming together. Oh, I forgot there's a little, there's some green in this bucket. We'll just throw that in right there. And... Okay, that looks good. I'm happy with all of this. 
Maybe go back here a little bit, add more color. And do the same right here. Okay. And a little more right here, just because I want to emphasize the darker spots. Here as well. And there we go. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Maybe a little more here. Not the whole thing, just kind of like outlining kind of like where the bottom is. It just gives so much more depth. I'll probably go back to it with a even darker green, actually. Uh, I'm just going to use this while I still have it to kind of... Uh... So the back here, I'm going to cover a lot of this in the green just because I want to make sure that I, it, it stands the front stands out from the back so a lot of this I'm just gonna uh, may, I might leave like a couple of bits and pieces of lighter green but for the most part I'm just covering it in because I'm trying to create that separation between the background and the middle ground and you know that looks fine and then as I move up the tree, I'm going to kind of disperse and uh, reduce the amount of shadow. And yeah, that's, that's how that worked out pretty good. Okay. I'm going to rinse off my brush. Got a little bit of brown here. A little bit of brown. And mix it in with the green a little bit. Okay. Yeah. There's some barrels that are like kind of like relaxing back here. I'm just going to go ahead and color them in. Uh, I know that I'm risking getting the green into it because it's so fresh. But on the count of it's right there with the background, I, I'm going to dry off my brush. Um, that's okay. Because we. I don't care if there's like a mess up here because I don't plan like this is not a central point it's just i just need it to be colored so it doesn't stick out with the white okay so we're largely done except obviously the the building itself still needs to be colored and we will do that. I'm just going to clear up some space here. And yeah, go straight for the bright yellow. Uh, I got to clean it up though. And this yellow too. Gotta... Okay, I'm going to get this. Put it down here. Kind of mix it in. And this yellow. Okay. So, it's kind of a yellow, yellowish. I'm going to give it just a dab of brown, just a little bit. Okay, there we go. And then I'm going to dilute it with the water, a, a whole bunch. There we go. And just going to lay down the wash, starting here. There we go. Same right here. And then right here. doesn't have to be perfect as always that's kind of <laughs> kind of my mantra at this point um, this up here is actually uh, this is a window 
that we're gonna make it very dark um, when we get to that. Cover this and this. There's basically all the white spots in the cottage. We're just for the wall. And okay, so we're good there. Now then, um, we need. Now we're gonna start getting into really, really dark uh, values. Get some of the dark blue here, and the brown, and the dark blue, and more dark blue, and more brown. And what we're gonna do is. I'm gonna go right underneath here, under the rafter, like that, kind of like where the shadow is. I'm gonna put that in there. I'm gonna go on this side, on the door the line, a little bit right here, just to show that there's shadow there. Kind of create an idea of where the darker spaces are. I'm gonna do right here also. Right there, some right there. Um, I'm gonna do a wash, so I'm gonna kind of rinse off the brush here and just kind of, yeah, I need more. Just kind of do it, yeah, there we go. It's gonna go right there over the whole thing, so it looks like a shadow. I mean, I think that's pretty apparent. And then also gonna put a shadow right there. And then right here. Right here. Yeah, I'm, I'm still gonna keep layering, but that's just because it helps. That really helps kind of like point out where the darker areas are. And with the dark brown, I'm gonna get some more right there. Get a little bit of blue. Okay, so now it's getting much darker. Okay, this this big hole here, I'm just gonna fill that in like that. When it dries, it's gonna look much lighter, and I'm just gonna go back in and fill it in again. Same for this little hole right there. Okay, looks good. And I'm gonna put one line there, and a thinner line right there, there, up here. Kind of like trying to distinguish the different parts. Okay. And I'm actually gonna outline these a little bit too, kind of like that. Maybe go back in and do some more outlines. Basically, I'm just kind of building up the values, just trying to make it look a little better. And back here where the barrels are, maybe do a couple of a couple of lines here just to show where the fence is. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it doesn't have to be perfect. But as long as it shows that there's depth, and then okay, and then. I'm gonna make the brown even darker this time so we can have a little more outline just in very specific areas like right there I'm going for thin lines I'm really trying to go for the thin thin lines there we go all right so I'm gonna go right there right there right there Th 
definitely in here. Uh, maybe a little too wet there. In here. Okay, I'm just kind of trying to establish more dark areas because the dark areas really help the light areas stick out. I'm going to do this right here. There we go, that looks much better. Oh, I almost forgot these branches here. I'm going to get a little more of the brown, kind of mix it in. These branches right here. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I'm actually really happy how this turned out. Almost at an hour. Um, I had actually spent closer to two hours painting this one. Uh, you just... Basically, you just layer the colors. The more you layer them, the more you can kind of make them stick out. Uh, especially the darker areas. And the darker the darker areas are, the more they make the lighter areas pop. So... That's pretty good. Okay, that was it for that one. Um, thank you for painting with me. Uh, hopefully you kind of get the whole concept. I feel like the more you practice, the, the much easier it gets. You just kind of like to plan it out and layer the colors. So keep going. And uh, I'll go ahead and I'll post the next uh, video probably today or tomorrow at some point. And I will see you in the next episode.